The tonsils are part of what is called wild Dyer's ring. Generally, when talking about the tonsils, we are talking about the palatine tonsils situated on both sides of the throat. There are also adenoids, tubal tonsils, and lingual tonsils, which make up wild Dyer's ring. The tonsils are a lymphoid organ containing macrophages, but mainly T cells and B cells. These cells are important in learning and building up the immune response. The tonsils are important in the early years of life because the lymphoid tissues containing the immune cells are continuously exposed to many antigens. That is why until the age of 6, tonsils are typically hyperplastic and tend to regress by 12 years of age. The palatine tonsils have a strong, rich blood supply from five different vessels. That is why there is a risk of a lot of bleeding with tonsillectomy. The tonsils have deep crypts and lymph nodules. The crypts are normally colonized by many species of bacteria and also exposed to many viral organisms. The lymph nodules contain immune cells such as the T cells, B cells, and the macrophages. Many viral and bacterial organisms can cause inflammation of the tonsils, tonsillitis. And this will cause tonsillar edema, hypertrophy, erythema, and pain. The inflammation may affect other areas of the back of the throat, including the adenoids and the lingual tonsils. The inflammatory response produces exudate, either white, gray, or yellow discharge. So cultures are not often useful in distinguishing the offending pathogen because even if you grow something, they are probably the commensal organisms that live within the tonsillar crypts anyway. Generally with acute tonsillitis, the pharynx is also inflamed. And so a better definition is pharyngotonsillitis rather than acute tonsillitis. The two important causes of tonsillitis to remember is Epstein-Barr virus and group A streptococcus, or strep pyogenes. Some clinical anatomy, adenoid hypertrophy can result in obstructive sleep apnea. The close relationship between the eustachian tube and the adenoids can cause eustachian tube dysfunction. For example, during an infection, the adenoid uh, can become big, which can obstruct the eustachian tube opening, and this increases the risk of developing acute hepatitis media. Palatine tonsil hypertrophy can also result in obstructive sleep apnea. Enlargement of these lymphatic tissues can result in mechanical narrowing obstruction of the upper airway. So when a child sleeps, the soft tissue of the pharynx usually relaxes and can further occlude the already narrowed airway. The palatine tonsils has a rich blood supply. The palatine tonsils are supplied by the branches of the external carotid artery. You have the anterior tonsilla, basically the dorsal lingual artery via the lingual artery. The inferior tonsillar artery via the facial artery the ascending palatine artery from the facial artery, the ascending pharyngeal artery from the external carotid, and then the superior tonsillar artery, basically the descending palatine branch of the maxillary artery. So these are the five main arteries that supply uh, the palatine tonsils. Care and close monitoring is required uh, for tonsillectomies as patients are at an increased risk of hemorrhage because of such rich blood supply. The venous drainage is via the peritonsillar plexus, which drains into essentially the facial vein and the uh, internal jugular vein. Sensation is provided via the tonsillar branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve as well as the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve.